Hello, hello, dear listener, to another episode of To Debate, your podcast of debates, or our podcast of debates, but hopefully uh, we share the pleasure all together here. Uh, Sebastian is smiling at me. I assume that's because of the beautiful weather outside and because we have his favorite subject matter today. What are we talking today about, uh, Sebastian? You, uh, you, get the, you get the honor to announce the topic. The topic today is about our favorite uh, person who never lies. No. He's always honest. He's very loyal and faithful. Yeah. Um, and that's Trump. And principled. Um, principled. And first and principled. foremost. Absolutely. And the motion today is Trump should not meet Kim Jong-un, who is the North Korean leader, for those who have uh, uh, yeah, uh, lived they, under uh, a rock for the past <laughs> uh, five years or so. Um, yeah, thanks for <laughs> explaining that. I was about to ask who the hell is Kim Jong-un. You know, this is a podcast. People will listen to that for, for hundreds of years. And if in 500 years somebody listens to our debate, he might wonder, I know who Donald Trump is, but who was that Kim Jong guy? All right, the flip of the coin has decided that I will be in favor of the motion. So I'm going to defend the fact that Trump should not meet the North Korean leader. And I will go first, whereas Dirk will say, yes, absolutely. Trump, the faithful, honest, uh, truth Hey, 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 you're starting president. a debate already. You start, uh, you try to oh, undermine. Sorry, I did that again? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. We are not there yet. We are not there yet, Sebastian. All right. Let's do this. Okay, let's do this. Sebastian goes first and argues against the motion. Yes, absolutely. We all believe that little rocket man, uh, which is the nickname Trump has given Kim Jong-un, will suddenly stop trying to develop nuclear weapons after 60 years of trying to get them and actually succeeding in getting nuclear weaponry. And they going to say and they're saying supposedly we're going to stop um, absolutely let's all believe this it's obvious there's going to be no genuine agreement that will come out of any meeting between the u.s president and a north korean leader does really anyone believe that north korea suddenly is going to stop their program just because they're meeting with the u.s president the only reason why kim jong-un wants to meet trump is to get this international recognition he wants to be treated as an equal, as the equivalent of the U.S. president. Uh, and that will be shown as a win by the North Korean leader. And that's it. Just meeting with the U.S. president is enough in itself to be a victory. He can meet Trump anywhere on the planet. And it's interesting to read some articles about where they're trying to find a, a joint location, which can uh, not lose face to any of them, uh, partly because Kim Jong-un doesn't even have planes which go far enough on the planet to go and have a meeting in any random location. But the thing is, Kim Jong-un, just if you look at this at this guy and how he remains in power, the fact that he remains in power is because he has this nuclear threat as an option. The second he relinquishes having a nuclear threat, you can bet that South Korea, Japan, and or the US will try at some point fairly soon to try and topple the leadership, to try and replace him and put a much more convenient regime in place in North Korea. It's going to be an interesting set of things. I have another additional arguments, but even if the meeting were a good thing, let's look at the Trump side now. Trump is completely unprepared for that kind of meeting, for any meeting uh, for that matter. The risk is huge. There's also no, almost no upside. And what if they decide suddenly in that meeting to go to war? I mean, they're both crazy enough to actually just like, press on their red buttons and start launching missiles where they're actually having coffee or tea uh, in, the, in the meeting. It's no surprise that no U.S. president has ever met the North Korean leader. They knew that there would be no good faith talks posit possible. So it's obvious that Trump should not meet Kim Jong-un. Someone please stop Trump. Now it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear his argument. You said it yourself. No U.S. president has ever met with Kim Jong-un or his father for that matter. So you could argue that's the last measurement left. That's the one thing we never tried. We tried diplomacy, we tried military threats, we tried uh, economic sanctions, but no one ever bothered to sit down with the guy. And yeah, you say if he meets with the president, that's a victory in itself, be that as it may. I would argue before we do anything crazy like starting a war, maybe having 
two of uh, both of them meeting and having a conversation is a is a solid course of action, something we actually should do. In fact, I will extend that. I think, of course, Trump should meet with Kim Jong-un. In fact, he would be stupid and irresponsible if he wouldn't. Uh, in my second argument, uh, uh, in the second segment, I will go deeper into that. But I would say for Trump, if I be cynical about that for a moment, this is a win-win-win scenario. He cannot go out of this conversation being the loser. Because think of it. Let's say they meet... And they have afterwards a military conflict because one of them did something stupid. Yeah, at least Trump can say he tried. And what's the alternative? To have the military conflict without having met before? I'm not sure if that is actually a alternative. But let's assume for a second Trump and Kim Jong-un get along. And Kim Jong-un understands that he has to give something to Trump in order to make Trump looking awesome. And in exchange, Trump gives hands him the keys to something cool as well. Invites him to sit at the table of accepted nations globally. Maybe that's, that's something that Kim Jong-un wants. And if in turn he hands over yeah, the nuclear arsenal or parts of that, that would be a victory for Trump. That would be hailed as a sign that he's finally the great leader that he wants to be. So I would argue he can actually not go out uh, losing this meeting, but he has everything to win. So yes, Trump definitely needs to meet with Kim Jong-un. And as I said, he would be stupid not to. Now it's Sebastian's turn. Let's hear his rebuttal. I will concede to you one thing, Dirk. I will concede one thing. I don't agree with you, but I concede one thing. That is always preferable to know what your eminent enemy thinks of you, what your adversary has in mind, and it's always worth talking to them. However, in this case, there's a lot of undersurface um, or image aspects that can go very wrong or can be used against you. So that's why a number of occasions in the history of diplom diplomacy, you have secret talks. In fact, as we're recording this, it's mid-April, just a week ago or two weeks ago, the director of the, of the CIA has met the North Korean leader in supposedly secret talks. Within 10 days, everyone's already aware of it, which shows that it's complete. Their, <laughs> Trump's administration is useless at keeping uh, even a secret. And the whole point was exactly to try and keep it confidential. Otherwise, there's no point. So I think that it shows not only the lack of professionalism on the Trump administration side, but in general, I would agree that discussing with your opponent makes sense, except don't make it public. There's too much to lose here. Um, and you want to be very careful about the publicity. So I will concede that it's useful, but I will not concede that it's useful to do it publicly, especially with someone as uncontrollable, un uncontrollable as, as Kim Jong-un. Of course, because Trump is totally controllable. The reason why I'm paused here is to show you that we both of these guys are actually loose cannons. They say whatever they want, uh, even despite the recommendations of their chiefs of staff or their, or their close allies. They just play by their own rules. And even their own administration has no idea what's on their, on their mind. So things can go very, very wrong. I'm quite adamant about this. And I think North Korea has one real objective, which surprisingly seems, when I read the news yesterday, again mid-April, that it seems that North Korea uh, no longer wants the US, or doesn't make it a condition for the US army to leave the region. Now, that seems very surprising to me. I beg to differ. I'd like to see more about this, because if anything, when I prepared this recording, that was already a few weeks ago, um, I was pretty. I was analyzing what does North Korea really want in all this. And I think what they really want is to get the US out of that region. They want to have them out of South Korea, out of the Pacific Ocean, and too close to North Korea to threaten them and basically take over North Korea's leadership. And suddenly, apparently yesterday, they would no longer want that. I mean, it's the second thing which makes it too good to be true. Suddenly, they would relinquish wanting to have nuclear weaponry. Secondly, they would not want to have the US out of the region anymore. I mean, come on, who are we fooling around? I mean, this is this is a massive joke that I think Kim Jong Un is playing on Trump and the rest of the world. So, if anything, we're looking at like fools, and there's nothing to gain here. I think there's actually quite a big risk at having North Korea being considered a a decent country that we can negotiate with. No, we can't negotiate with them, and that actually comes back to the uh, debate that we had a few months ago about whether we should anticipate and actually uh, bomb 
uh, North Korea uh, in anticipation before they actually do something crazy. So I refer our listeners back to that debate uh, because obviously we cover everything and anything in todebate.net. Next up, Dirk. History shows that it's not for the observers to decide whether or not a leader or a country is worth or capable of negotiating. Fact of the matter is, there is North Korea, and it's been there for several decades. And by now, they not only have the largest standing army of this planet, no, they also probably have nuclear weapons. So, it doesn't matter what you think or I think about Kim Jong-un's or Donald Trump's uh, psychological ability to negotiate. They are a country there and other large countries like, for instance, China seem to believe that they can negotiate and talk with uh, Kim Jong-un and North Korea. So I think it's time that we go off our high horse and we have had talks with with irresponsible murderous leaders in the past when it served our our purposes and we will continue doing so uh in case of north korea i think having trump and kim jong-un in one room together talking that's the theater for the masses what that also means is a full-blown conference as these meetings always are and it's actually also an opportunity for the let's say second row leaders in both countries to exchange opinions as well unobserved by the public i also many of the meetings and things that leak and are published i'm not sure if all of these are really accidentally published i give you that the trump administration is uh, apparently not very good in controlling pretty much anything but i also doubt that everything happens just out of accidents Kim Jong-un, as well as Trump, have everything to win and nothing to lose. Both of them lose when they have a nuclear war at their hands. Both of them lose when they kill millions of people. And if we assume for a second that they are not as crazy and irresponsible as we like to think, or as we sometimes believe, then sitting together and having a, a, a conversation uh, over what they really want may be just the right thing to do. Imagine they are smart enough, both, and Trump and Kim Jong-un basically agree in secrecy that Kim Jong-un gives Trump what he wants and Trump gives Kim Jong-un what he wants and they walk out of, uh, of this room with a deal. Trump is a hero. Kim Jong-un saves face. Everything resolved. I, I agree that this is probably not going to happen, but I do think it's one of the potential outcomes that makes it very desirable for Trump to go there and have that conversation. In the end, if North Korea has the bomb or not really doesn't matter. What does matter is that they force themselves on the table. We have to deal with them. We have to talk with them. And this is probably, and that's something we, we discussed in our 13th debate that you just mentioned, that's what we discussed there as well. That's probably the thing that Kim Jong-un really, really wants to have. Final statements. Sebastian goes first. Yes, we can negotiate. But as I said, because these leaders are so volatile and because it's going to be a series of lies, and I'm going to explain that in a second, it should be done privately, not publicly. Um, and the reason for that is to avoid using the image of a high-level meeting for other purposes and actually coming to a deal. And who are we fooling anyway? What kind of deal can we come to? Pakistan, Israel supposedly don't have nuclear weapons, at least officially, but we all know that do they do have it. Do you really think North Korea is going to is going to say, "Oh, we're going to stop our uh, building nuclear weapons"? Of course not. This is the only way. If I'm a dictator, and you can read the Dictator's Handbook, which is a very insightful book from 2011, it's obvious that this is North Korea's leader's wild card. He needs this to remain in power. So I actually completely disagree that um, Kim Jong-un has nothing to lose in killing millions of people. He doesn't care. It's not why he needs to stay in power. If anything, North Korea has had millions of people dying from uh, short shortages of food, and he doesn't care about that. It's a way for him to remain in control of the country. So... They're not the right people to negotiate anything or even to talk. 
with one another. I'm perfectly fine if Kim Jong-un plays golf with Trump at one of his resorts anywhere worldwide. That could be very funny to actually see in a photo or a video, but that's it. Otherwise, Trump should really not meet Kim Jong-un. Both are completely uncontrollable and volatile. Dirk. I'm surprised that you didn't bring one argument that I would have brought if I would walk in your shoes. You didn't tell me that it's for the Western world just not appropriate to meet with somebody as violent and as unmoral like Kim Jong-un. That would be my argument actually against the meeting. But the fact of the matter is everybody else met with the guy already and history is repeating itself at this point. We don't remember that because we are too young, but China has been exactly in the same position. They developed the bomb and the US was at the brink of a war, discussing whether or not to strike first or have talks with them. And US presidents have refused to talk with China until Nixon came along and famously flew over and had a summit with them. And see where we are. We didn't spiral into a third world war with nuclear weapons. And yet, even though China is not exactly the poster child of human rights, we actually contain that situation to the better, I would say. So yes, Trump needs to go there and has a, have a conversation. He has nothing to lose and everything to win. And if it comes to a military conflict, then this is something we were heading towards anyway. So it's not Trump who makes that difference there. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening. As always, don't forget to vote. Uh, I think, Dirk, you're leading. You're leading by one debate, if I'm not mistaken now. Because the last one you have... Yeah, 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 I do check. Hey, this is a competition. So, our dear listeners, you're free to vote. Uh, there's no consequence whether you vote for Dirk or for me. Uh, whether you know me personally or not, I promise you're allowed to vote for whomever you want. Thank you for listening. Bye, Sebastian. Bye -bye. Cheers. Cheers. Interesting and serious debate today. I did not bring up the, the argument of we don't meet with bad guys because I don't think there is a black and white definition of that. I think it's all spectrum. I'm just saying both of them are just not fit for the role, basically, to be able to talk to one another. They can play golf. They can talk about you know Bitcoin trading. They can play video games together. They can go skateboarding together. I mean... But this is Whatever. not our place to decide, right? They are leaders of their country. So this is their job. This is their role. Playing theater for the masses. Which, by the way, is what I believe this is. I think Trump should meet the Kim Jong-un if, if, like, if, if I were in his shoes. Because it's, as you said, it's a theater to show. So it, Whatever happens, he's going to play it in a positive way. He's going to spin it and say, yeah, look at me. They should not mean it. And the reason, for the reason I say this is because he has no idea about anything. He's in completely in incompetent. He, he doesn't have the knowledge. He's just a loud mouth. And the second thing, he doesn't, mean, he doesn't even read the memos. Imagine they walk into a room, it blows up, and we have a full-blown military crisis at our hand. What stops him from doing this after watching Fox and Friends? He can do that from any place on the planet. But if he was in a meeting with Kim Jong-un before that, he can walk out and say, I tried. But this guy clearly was a threat to America, so I acted as commander-in-chief. So he, he can only win. He owns the news cycle for once for a while. He can say, I'm really trying things. If he actually makes a lucky punch and bring something valuable back he can even say see obama didn't manage to get this done but i got this ball rolling i totally see why he's doing it i think it's it's useless theater for us we should better focus on something else but uh that's a different story i uh i think uh, yeah i i don't disagree with what you're saying it really depends on the perspective you're taking whether you're looking at trump his administration or or maybe even the republican side of view side of things versus the rest of the world basically Here's the other thing. You said Trump is a loose cannon. I wonder sometimes how much of that is theater as well. 
because if you look at his policies or the ones he is able to put through actually they look remarkably similar to policies that republican presidents had in the past they are pretty consistent with some of the things that have were done in the past by u.s presidents just because he makes a lot of noise and fuss about it and falls flat on the face and everything that's crazier than that doesn't mean that uh, as as a result, the things he's doing are out of bounds or crazier than, than other things that happened in the past. If anything, then they are pretty easy to calculate in their desire to look good. Both. Both want to be supreme leaders in the end. And that makes them actually easier to understand than some of the other people where you wonder what's, what's the motive. That's a good point. I don't think they're crazy as such. I just think they're Trump is stupid. Um, <laughs> sorry to say it so bluntly. And he has all the words. I think I, I think he's smart, but in a political way. But I don't think he's intellectually intellectually smart. But that doesn't mean that if, uh, case in point, he didn't need to have that to come in to get the power. And probably the same with Kim Kim Jong Un. I don't think he's intellectually smart. He would be really, really, really dumb if he really genuinely let go of that nuclear uh, weapon. He can say it just, you know, just to pretend and to lie, but that would be insane. I would never do that. No. Imagine Trump comes out of that negotiation, says every country has a right to have uh, nuclear power, oh uh, nuclear God. weapon. That is the worst case scenario, actually, my friend. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs>